Hi guys, welcome back to more Ruby. We're on episode 11. enough students as you can see mr ark's aura has now dropped into the red in a tournament style duel this would indicate that john is no longer fit for battle and that the official may call the match mr ark it's been weeks now please try to refer to your scroll during combat gauging your aura will help you decide when it is appropriate to attack or when it is better to move to a more defensive strategy we wouldn't want you to be gobbled up by a Beowulf, now would we? Speak for yourself. Remember, everyone, the Vital Festival is only a few months away. It won't be long before students from the other kingdoms start arriving in Vale, so keep practicing. Those who choose to compete in the combat tournament will be representing all of Vale. Ah, oh, poor John. So, there we were, in the middle of the night. It was day. We were surrounded by Earth's side. They were Beowulfs. Dozens of them! Two of them. But they were no match. <laughs> and in the end, Ren and I took them down and made a boatload of Lian selling Earth's skin rugs. <sighs> She's been having this recurring dream for nearly a month now. John, are you okay? Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, why? It's just that you seem a little... not okay. Uh, guys, I'm fine. Seriously. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Jean, Carden has been picking on you since the first week of school. Are they making fun of the girl? Uh, who? Carden Winchester? Nah, he just likes to mess around, you know? Practical jokes. He's a bully. Oh, please. I know that Maybe explains one time it. He's bullied me. <laughs> oh, no, come on! Huh? Really? <laughs> what a punch right on the face. <laughs> Each of you will be assigned one rocket propelled locker to store your weapons and extra armor. Additionally, your locker can be sent to a custom location based on a six digit code. What? No, wait, wait, do you? My god, he's supposed to get his ass kicked. I didn't land far from the school. Jean, you know if you ever need help, you can just ask. Oh! We'll break his legs! Yes! Guys, really, it's fine. <laughs> Besides, it's not like he's only a jerk to me. He's a jerk to everyone. Ow, that hurts! <laughs> oh! Please what stop. a bastard! <laughs> I told you it was real. Hit him with the tray. <laughs> Hit him with the tray. Aww. Atrocious. I can't stand people like him. He's not the only one. It must be hard to be a Faunus. <sighs> I got my eye on you. Okay. <laughs> This is episode 12, part 2. To the revolution, more popular known as the Snoring. War, humankind was quite, quite adamant about centralizing Faunus population in Menagerie. Now, while this must feel like ancient history to many of you, it is imperative to remember that these are relatively recent events. Why the repercussions of the uprising can still be seen to this day. Now, have any among you been subjugated or discriminated because of your Faunus heritage? Dreadful, simply dreadful. Remember, students, it is precisely this kind of ignorance that breeds violence. 
I mean, I mean, I mean, just look at what happened to the White Fang. Now, which one of you young scholars can tell me what many theorists believe to be the turning point in the third year of the war? Yes. The battle at Fort Castle. Precisely. And who can tell me the advantage the Faunus had over General Lagoon's forces? Hey, really? We are finally contributing to class. This is excellent, excellent. What is the answer? Uh, the answer... The advantage uh, the Faunus had over that guy's stuff... Uh, binoculars. <laughs> Very funny, Mr. Ark. Cotton, perhaps you would care to share your thoughts on the subject. Well, I know it's a lot easier to train an animal than a soldier. You're not the most open-minded of individuals, are you, Cardin? What? You got a problem? No. I have the answer. It's night vision. Many faunas are known to have nearly perfect sight in the dark. <sighs> General Legume was inexperienced and made the mistake of trying to ambush the faunas in their sleep. His massive army was outmatched and the general was captured. Perhaps if he'd paid attention in class, he wouldn't have been remembered as such a failure. <clears throat> Mr. Yeah. Winchester, Got him. Take your seat. <laughs> you and Mr. Ark could both see me after class for additional readings. Oh. Now, moving on. You go on ahead. I'll wait for Jean. You two have been struggling in my class since day one. Okay. Now, I don't know if it's a lack of interest or just your stubborn nature, but whatever it is, it stops now. You've worked hard to gain entrance to the school, and we only accept the best of the best. So, I expect you to act like it. History is important, gentlemen. If you can't learn from it, you're destined to repeat it. Pages 51 to 91. I want an essay on my desk by next class. Now, run along. Really? I hate that dude. Ah, you know. I really will break his I legs. hate bullies. <sighs> I have an idea. Here, come with me. Uh, Pira, I know I'm going through a hard time right now, but I'm not that depressed. <laughs> I can always be a farmer or something. No! <laughs> you up here Jean I know you're having a difficult time in class and that you're still not the strongest of fighters so I want to help you what we can train up here after class where no one can bother us you think I need help N no no that's not what I meant but you just said it Jean everybody needs a little push from time to time it doesn't make you any different from the rest of us. You made it to Beacon. That speaks volumes of what you're capable of. You're wrong. I, I don't belong here. That's a terrible thing to say. Of course you do. No, I don't. I wasn't really accepted into Beacon. What do you mean? I mean, I didn't go to combat school, I didn't pass any tests, I didn't earn my spot at this academy. I lied. I got my hands on some fake transcripts, and I lied. What? But why? Because this is what I've always wanted to be. My father, my grandfather, and his father before him were all warriors. They were all heroes. I wanted to be one too. I was just never good enough. Then let me help you. I don't want help. I don't want to be the damsel in distress. I want to be the hero. John, I... I'm tired of being the lovable idiot stuck in the tree while his friends fight for their lives. Don't you understand? If I can't do this on my own, then what good am I? Just leave me alone, okay? If that's what you think is best.
Oh, Jean. Oh, crap. Did he heard of that? I couldn't help but overhear you two from my dorm room. So, you snuck into Beacon, huh? I gotta say, Jean, I never expected you to be such a rebel. Please, Cardin, please don't tell anyone. Jean, come on. I never ratted a friend like that. Uh, a friend? Of course. No, We're he's tricking you, Sean. <laughs> and the way I see it, as long as you're there for me when I need you, we'll be friends for a long time. <laughs> that being said, I really don't have time to do those extra readings Dr. Ubak gave us today. Think you could take care of that for me, buddy? That's God, he's I so thought. lazy. Don't worry, Jean. Your secret's safe with me. Oh, he falls down. Damn it. <laughs> Oh, this was interesting. So this episode we saw Sean getting bullied by Cardin. He also bullies other people. Like he, when he was pulling the girl's ears. Oh my god. Somebody should just punch him. Like Nora said, break his legs. Break them good. He deserves it. <laughs> he deserves it for being a bully. Then Pira took Sean to the rooftop. <laughs> and she was like, Pira, I'm not that desperate. I'm not gonna jump off. <laughs> this episode, we also learned that Sean, he's not going to begin because he wants to be like his father, his grandfather, and his grandfather's father. And then Carden overheard it. And you know what that means? I know Sean. Sean, he can actually do it. He got the power. He has to believe in himself that he can actually do it. <laughs> he has to kick Carden's butt. Thanks for watching. Bye.